Hello, it's Andy from the Science of RVs, and today we're going to talk about noise. How do I quieten my generator to a level that means I can use it and not be a, 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 a citizen that everybody hates um, and, and use it all the time if I choose to? Well, to demonstrate a little bit of science, we're going to do an experiment. Okay, so what kind of sound waves do we have? So there's two types of sound wave, high frequency, like that, so very short wavelengths, and these kind of, this is your, your treble, not your treble in your bass, your treble, uh, end of the spectrum, and these are really good at getting through small gaps, because sound is transmitted through air very well, so if you've got any kind of gaps, even the tiniest gap, your high frequency will get through it. The other type of sound wave is a low frequency like this, and that's your base. They tend to travel very well through structure, so if you've got any physical connection between your, the outside world and the, uh, and the inside world, if you like, um, like the fabric of the building or the shell of a vehicle, your base, which is why if somebody's going past in the car and the windows are shut, you can still hear the boop, 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 boop. That's because it's resonating through the structure of the vehicle and being transmitted that way. So if you don't tackle both of these, and you have to tackle them in different ways, then you're not going to make that generator quiet. Another little bit of sound. So how do you manage sound, or how do you describe sound frequency? Well, the frequency that something um, oscillates at um, is a function of two things. One is a spring. And the other is a damper. Um, and the spring is essentially driven by stiffness. And the da damping is like your shock absorber is a damping factor. Now, to tackle various frequencies, you can tune how much damping you have versus how much stiffness you have. Stiffness um, uh, is how rigid something is. Um, so for some frequencies, um, just having a lot of stiffness or mass something's heavy will help um, damp the, the, the frequency. At another, you need um, a lot of damping factor. So depending on the combination of, of stiffness um, and damping depends on what frequency um, your system's going to operate at. The way that people try and manage both of these in sound deadening systems is they have a combination of damping using things like insulation and foams um, and they have a combination of stiffness where they will put mass into the system to try and manage that but in reality because they're covering a range of frequencies they'll put a mixture of these in so they can tackle both the high and low frequency so I'm going to do a little experiment which shows you a number of different things that adds various types of dampening, various types of uh, uh, stiffness elements, so something that's very fluffy and not very stiff at all, and, and sound can bounce off multiple surfaces. That's the, the kind of foam or, or acoustic blanket type material. The other thing that this doesn't tackle, because this is all about what managing frequency, the other thing it doesn't tackle is obviously the transmission medium of the sound, so sound travels by air, which is getting from my mouth to the microphone. Um, so we want to make sure that there's no sound leaks in the system. And also there's physical vibration. And that physical vibration can become, because it's energy, can become sound. So on a generator that's bouncing around, we're going to have to manage that physical vibration. So the decibel, be decibel meter is ticking away. This is the instantaneous sound. This one above is the average over a minute and we're going to use my mobile phone as a sound source. I'm just going to step through a number of different um, changes so that we can see what the difference is on the decimal reading. Obviously, this is just a meter. You can see when I'm speaking, we're getting up to about here. Um, so let's see what... Um, this is my generator.
What was that? Well, that was a side pod on a bus or an RV, or it was an enclosure that you put a generator in. And it had a vent. So I've got a generator. Let's do it again quickly. I got a generator, and um, what's the worst thing I can do? Well, it's to put it into a box that's going to amplify the sound. So just listen. Hear that vibration? And then. Wow! And guess what? It's just like a guitar. So what this is telling us is, if you want a quiet generator and you stick it in a non-acoustic enclosure, the opposite is going to happen. You're going to amplify the sound. And also here, you can hear it's transmitting the vibration to the box. And that's just bounce around inside this box. Now, all right. If I put some acoustic material in there, just lob something in. What's that going to do? On its own, not a lot, because I'm still pushing the box. Let's put the phone on top of that acoustic material. Ah. Ah. The box isn't vibrating anymore. It's a lot quieter. So, what not to do? What did we learn? Well, we learned that um, just putting something in a box gets you some good reduction in sound, but not to the level that you need. We learned that if you put a vibrating entity straight on the structure of your vehicle, it's just going to transmit that vibration and your whole vehicle is going to become a, an acoustic box. Um, so you need